Dear 10th standard students, welcome to history, lesson number 5, social and religious reform movements. In this session, we are going to discuss first part of this lesson. You have already known that the Indian society was full of various beliefs. To reform the Indian society, many movements took place. Those movements were known as social and religious reform movements. Some reformers, they wanted to remove the evils that were existed in the society. It may be in the form of, it may be in the field of religion and in the society or in other system. First, let us see, in this session, we are going to discuss about all these concepts, Brahma Samaj or Rajara Mohan Rai, Young Bengal Movement, Arya Samaj, Prarthana Samaj, Satya Shodak Samaj, Aligarh Reformation Movement. First, we have to discuss what do you mean by social reform, meaning of social reform. Social reform is an attempt to reform a society. It was an attempt to reform a society that practices discrimination among its members. There was a discrimination among the members of society to solve or to remove those discrimination is known as social reform. Reforming the society, the reformation of society was taken by various leaders or various organization. Among them, first organization was Brahma Samaj. You have already known that Brahma Samaj was founded by Raja Ram Mohan Rai. Raja Ram Mohan Rai is the chief initiator of social reformation in India during modern times. Reformation was started by him during the modern times and he was known as the father of social reformation. He had deep knowledge in various languages like Sanskrit, Persian, Arabic literature. He had complete control over these languages and also he had knowledge about Hindu philosophical critic and also Quran. Apart from this, he also studied other religion. He belonged to Hindu religion. Even though he belonged to Hindu religion, Raja Ram Mohan Rai studied various other religions of Indian society. He had even learned Hebrew and Greek to read Bible in its original form. He studied Bible, he studied Quran and he completely studied Hindu philosophy. In this way, Raja Rao Mohan Rai gained complete knowledge over religion. He wanted to reform Indian society with the help of organization. That is why he started Atmiya Sabha in Calcutta along with this some friends. Atmiya Sabha was started by Raja Ram Mohan Rai and his friends. The main aim of Atmiya Sabha was the eradication of socio-religious maladies from the society of Bengal. The society of Bengal was full of various evils. Those evils were known as socio-religious maladies. He wanted to remove those evils. That is why Raja Ram Mohan Rai started Atmiya Sabha. He started Brahma Samaj in the year 1858. Brahma Samaj was founded by Raja Ram Mohan Rai. He wanted to purge Hinduism by removing caste system and superstitions. Hindu society was full of superstitious belief and caste system. With the help of Brahma Samaj, he wanted to remove those caste system and superstitious belief. He tried to develop rationality among the common people through journalism. That is why he started Samvad Kaumudi in Bengali language. Raja Ram Mohan Rai published Samvad Kaumudi to develop a rationality among the common people. Due to his efforts, due to the efforts of Raja Ram Mohan Rai, Sati system was abolished in India. Sati system was abolished by Governor General 
William Bentinck in the year 1829. Lord William Bentinck with the help of Raja Ramohan Rai abolished Sati system. You have already known what do you mean by Sati system? Sati it was a system which prevailed during the ancient times after the death of her husband wife would jump into the funeral fire of her husband. This system was known as Sati system. It was a social evil and it, ex, it creates exploitation of women. In order to overcome all these bad effects or evils, Rajara Mohan Rai forced Lord William Benting to abolish the Sati system. Now, we shall discuss the important aspects of Brahma Samaj. What were the important aspects or features? First one advocated monotheism, it forced people to worship only one God and it opposed meaningless rituals that were prevailed in Indian society. Every person should live with dignity and no law or ritual should violate this provision. Everybody must have the equal right, everybody must have the peaceful life, everybody must have the uh, respect in the society. Fourth one, Brahma Samaj intended to assure equality to women by opposing polygamy. It opposed polygamy because it wanted to give equality to women. It advocated for a share in property to honor dignity of life to widow. It also opposed child marriage. In this way, Brahma Samaj opposed polygamy opposed child marriage, gave importance to the life and respect of women. Brahma Samaj declared that one can take good things from anywhere. We can take good things from anywhere. It also declared that Upanishads and Vedas also advocated these principles. These are all the important aspects of Brahma Samaj. Another important one, Young Bengal movement. Another important concept of this lesson is Young Bengal Movement. Young Bengal Movement was started by Henry Louis Vivian de Rosio. His father was a Portuguese and his mother was an Indian. That is why he was called Anglo-Indian. The Young Bengal Movement held discussions and debates on issues like nature, humanism, God and other various topics. They discussed what is nature, what are the effects of nature, what is humanism, what is God and they had, a very, they had discussions regarding these topics. Derosio worked towards spreading the message that only rational thinking would liberate people from the clutches of superstitions and social discriminations. That is why he gave importance to rational thinking among the people. If the people have the rational thinking, they will be in a position to remove social evils or superstitious belief from the Indian society. De Rosio was an advocate of women rights. He gave importance to women rights. He opposed caste based discrimination. Many of his students who had come from traditional families were deeply influenced by De Rosio's thoughts and joined their hands in spreading the movement across Bengal. Various people joined hands with him to spread his message across the Bengal. In this way, Young Bengal movement was started by De Rosio. He, he also wanted to reform the Indian society. He also wanted to overcome the evils from the Indian society. Another important concept of this lesson is Arya Samaj. Arya Samaj was founded by Dayananda Saraswati in the year 1875 and it was started in Bombay. It was more powerful during the last two decades of 19th century. Arya Samaj became more powerful and it was successful in spreading its messages during the last two decades of 19th century. Dayananda Saraswati was born in 1824. Where he was born? He was born in Katiyawar of Gujarat and his original name was Moolashankara. His father was Ambashankar Tiwari 
and mother Amruta Bai. In this way, Dayananda Saraswati belonged to Gujarat and he was not interested in English. When he was a child, he was not interested in English education. He received Sanskrit education. He left his house by the age of 21 years and roamed across the country for about 15 years. He wanted to study the Indian society and finally, after studying Indian society, after studying the various system that prevailed in Indian society, he wrote a book called Satyartha Prakasha and also Dayananda Saraswati realized that the remedies to the various maladies of India are present in Vedas. If you want to remove the evils from Indian society, the all the solutions are found in Vedas. That is why he gave importance to Vedas and also he gave a call back to Vedas. The call back to Vedas in the sense, Vedas consists of solutions to the various problems of Indian society. And he opened the head office of Arya Samaj in Lahore in their 1877, he declared that only Vedas are authentic, only the Vedas are the source of truth. That is why he forced the people to study Vedas. Vedas are the truth, Vedas are the authentic, Vedas have the power to solve the problems of India. That is why he gave a call back to Vedas. What were the aims of Arya Samaj? Arya Samaj had various aims. First one, all Hindus should believe in one formless God. Second one, no one is Shudra or Brahmin by birth and caste based system was rejected. Encouragement to inter caste marriages, rejection of polygamy and child marriage, men and women are equal. One should study Vedas and other ancient sacred texts and preach them. These are the aims of Ari Samaj. Here you can see they gave importance to God and also the caste and even marriage and they give importance to men and women. They opposed to child marriage, they opposed to polygamy, they opposed to caste system and they gave importance to one God, one formless God. Shuddhi movement was another important program of this Arya Samaj. What do you mean by Shuddhi movement? Reconversion of people who had converted to Islam and Christianity from Hinduism back to Hinduism. He wanted to call the people who had gone to other religion again to Hinduism. That system was called or that program was called Shuddhi movement. Shuddhi movement was considered as an important movement started by Arya Samaj. Along with this Shuddhi movement, cow protection associations were also started by Arya Samaj to protect the cows. So, they gave importance to cow, they gave importance to Vedas and also they wanted to purify Indian society, wanted to purify Indian religion. In this way, Arya Samaj and Dayananda Saraswati played a very important role in the purification of Indian society. Another important concept of this lesson that is Prarthana Samaj. When we heard about Prarthana Samaj, Atmaram Panduranga. Atmaram Panduranga was the founder of this Prarthana Samaj and it was found in the year 1867 at Bombay by Dr. Atmaram Panduranga. What was its aim? Its main aim was to find solutions to various problems faced by women and lower caste groups. During that time, the women of Bombay and also the lower caste people of Bombay, they were facing various problems. To find a solution to those problems, Prarthana Samaj was started here. This association argued that reinterpretation of Hinduism is needed in the light of modern western thinking. Only the western thinking help to reform Indian society. Prarthana Samaj 
gave importance to western thinking. It advocated that reformation should not be a wish, but should be implemented in reality. Many programs like education for women, rehabilitation of poor people were undertaken by the Prarthana Samaj. Mahadeva Govinda Ranade or M. G. Ranade, R. G. Bandarkar and N. G. Chandavarkar, they were the other prominent leaders of Prarthana Samaj. Prarthana Samaj was started by Dr. Atmara Pandurang. Along with this, these important leaders also contributed for the growth of this Samaj. The scope of Prarthana Samaj got more importance during the period of Justice Ranade. Under the leadership of Justice Ranade, Prarthana Samaj achieved more success because Ranade attempted to reject child marriages and discrimination of widows. He opposed child marriage. He gave importance to equality among women. That is why he opposed to child marriage. During the rule or during the period of Justice Ranade, Prarthana Samaj achieved more. Justice Ranade believed that Legal intervention is needed to stop child marriages and encourage widow remarriages. He wanted strong legal procedure to stop child marriage. He wanted to give more importance to widow mar marriages or he supported widow remarriages. Hence, he advocated to take the help of British government only with the help of British government. According to Ranade, child marriage and also child marriages can be stopped and widow remarriages can be encouraged. That is why he wanted to take the help of British government. In this way, Prarthana Samaj also played a very important role in the purification of Indian society. Now, let us move to Satya Shodak Samaj. Satya Shodak Samaj was started by Mahatma Jyoti Bapule. Why? Because there were widespread discrimination based on caste and gender in Maharashtra, just like in other parts of India. During that time, especially in Maharashtra, there were various discrimination based on the caste, based on the gender. During the colonial rule of the British, many movements were started to address these social problems. Even though many movements were started to overcome all these problems, still the discrimination continued. That is why Satya Shodak Samaj was started by Mahatma Jyotiba Pule in the year 1873. Its main aim was to provide equal rights to non brahmin and also to women. They wanted to uplift the position of non brahmins and also the women. Mahatma Jyotiba Pule, he was the famous social reformer of Maharashtra, he founded Satya Shodaka Samaj. In order to build a philosophical base for the movement, he wrote a book called Gulamagiri, Shatkariyacha Asud, which means cultivators whip cord were also written by him. Mahatma Jyotiba Phule was the founder of Satya Shodaka Samaj and he wrote a book called Gulamagiri and Shatkariyacha Asud, cultivators. Whip cord. And his wife Savitri Bapule also helped him in this adventure. He opened school for Shudras and girls, and Pule, who belonged to Mali caste, allowed people from all castes, including untouchables, to draw water from his well. Savitri Bai, Savitri Bai Pule joined hands with him in his endeavor. Jyoti Bapule and Savitri Bai Pule. They opened various schools for Shudras and they opposed caste system. They gave importance to the dignity of women. In this way, Satya Shodak Samaj played a very important role in the reformation of Indian society, especially in Maharashtra. And here they established hostel for girls, Jyoti Bapule and Savitri Bapule. Together they started hostel for girls. The work of police is important in the direction of establishing society based on equality. 
it played a very important role in the creation of equality based society and Ambedkar was very much inspired all these uh, thoughts of Jyotiba Pule. Ambedkar was very much impressed by the thoughts of Satya Shodak Samaj, that is why he became the followers. Last one, Aligarh reformation movement, actually all this uh, Brahma Samaj, Arya Samaj, Satya Shodaka Samaj, in Bengal movement, Prarthana Samaj, all these Samajas or movements belong to Hindu society, but a legal reformation movement belong to Muslim society. By the end of 19th century, a new way of social and religious reformation was set in Muslim society. Anti-British sentiment became strong in Muslim community after the incident of 1857. Aligarh reformation movement wanted to reform the Muslim society, they wanted to educate the Muslims, that is why they gave importance to English education. During this period, Sir Sayyid Ahmad Khan attempted to start a new movement, that movement was known as Aligarh reformation movement. His main aim was to reform the Muslim society with the help of English education. Mohammedan literary society established in 1863 started debates and discussions on the issues related to religion, social and political issues. The upper and middle class youth participated in this discussion and started realizing the value of English education. They came to know the importance of English education with the help of these discussions. Sir Sayyid Ahmad Khan wanted or tried to reform Muslim society. Sir Sayyid Ahmad Khan lived from 1817 to 1898. He declared that Quran is the authoritative book and other works on Islam are derived ones. He gave more importance to Quran. He said, one has to interpret one's religion according to the changing times. One has to interpret the religion according to the changing times, otherwise religion becomes sluggish. Sir Ahmad Khan, he fought against traditions, he fought against superstitious beliefs, he fought against ignorance, irrationality, irrationalities throughout his life. He wanted to reform Muslim society, for that purpose he fought against all these superstitious belief. In this way, he was successful in reforming Muslim society. He said, without an open mind, any social and intellectual development is impossible. It is not possible to reform in Muslim society. Without proper knowledge or without open mind, it is not possible to get social and intellectual knowledge. He did not support Parda system for Muslim women. He called for educating Muslim girls, gave more importance to the education of Muslim girls. He also not accepted polygamy. He opposed to polygamy. He opposed to Parda system. In order to implement his ideas, he founded Mohammedan Anglo Oriental College in the year 1875. Mohammedan Anglo Oriental College was started by Sir Sayyid Ahmad Khan in Aligarh. He utilized this institution to spread Western scientific and cultural ideas. With the help of Western scientific and cultural ideas, he wanted to reform Muslim society. In this way, Aligarh reformation movement and the contributions of Sir Sayyid, Sir Sayyid Ahmad Khan played a very important role in the reformation of Muslim society. Dear students, in today's sessions we have learnt Brahma Samaj, Raja Ram Mohan Rai, Young Bengal Movement, Dero, Henry De Rosio, Arya Samaj, Dayananda Saraswati, Prarthana Samaj, Atmaram Panduranga, Satya Shodaka Samaj, Jyoti Bapule and Savitri Bai Pule, Aligarh Reformation Movement or Sir Sayyid, Sir Sayyid Ahmad Khan. All these concepts have been discussed in today's session. 
Now, I am going to ask you some questions relating to this. First main, complete the following blanks with suitable answers. First one, Raja Ramohan Rai started dash periodical. Second one, the founder of Prarthana Samaj is dash. Third one, the young Bengal movement was started by dash. Fourth one, the founder of Arya Samaj is dash. Fifth one, the founder of Satya Shodak Samaj is dash. Second main, answer the following questions. What are the important aspects of Brahma Samaj? Second one, write a note on young Bengal movement. Third one, what are the aims of Arya Samaj? Fourth one, discuss the reformation advocated by Prarthana Samaj. Fifth one, discuss the reformation advocated by Satya Shodak Samaj. Okay, students, you have to write the answers for all these questions. After writing the answer, you must show it to your teachers. If any mistakes are there, ask the guidance of your teachers. Dear students, in this session, we have discussed the part 1 of social and religious reformation movement. During the next session, we shall discuss the second part of it. I wish you all the best. Thank you.